Good happy Sunday evening. I'm Riley King and welcome to this Sunday evening edition of the Riley King Newscast right here on the Riley King Network. Let's begin. We have a lot of news to get to this Sunday evening, so let's get started. First up, let's begin with your COVID-19 updates. There are 29 new positive test results for COVID-19 in New Hampshire. 308 active cases, no new deaths reported. Health officials confirmed 29 new positive cases of COVID-19 in New Hampshire Sunday. The latest COVID-19 data information for New Hampshire. Let's take a look at that right now. And here is a look at that for all of you right now. There are 7,920 number of people in New Hampshire have tested positive for COVID-19. 6,764,680 number of people in the United States have tested positive. 438 number of deaths from COVID-19 in New Hampshire. 725 number of people have been hospitalized with COVID-19 in New Hampshire. And 199, 258 number of deaths from COVID-19 in the United States. And let's take a look at this map of New Hampshire where current cases of COVID-19 are. Manchester, 37. And let's take a look at this map of New Hampshire where total cases of COVID-19 are. Manchester, 2020. And now let's take a look at these three charts here. Let's start with the first chart here. New cases each day in New Hampshire in the purple. Daily new positive COVID-19 cases in the orange. New hospitalizations and in the red are the deaths. Let's take a look at this chart here. Current cases in the purple. Current COVID-19 cases, and in the orange, current hospitalizations. <laughs> and let's take a look at this chart here, total cases in the purple, total positive COVID-19 cases in the orange, total hospitalizations, red death and blue recovered. Let's take a look at this chart here, age group of cases, female and male of cases, and risk information. Let's take a look at this chart here, infections, hospitalizations, and death. Let's take a look at this chart here. Deaths, percent of New Hampshire population, race slash ethnicity of cases, and hospitalizations. And a reminder, your common symptoms, fever, lack of smell, cough, difficult breathing, chills, nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. How it spreads, and prevention tips. And be sure to stay with the Riley King Network for the latest of your COVID-19 information. Family of fallen Merrimack airman hoping to honor his legacy. Staff Sergeant Ronald Olet, 23, died last week in an ATV crash in Al Salm Air Base in Quet. Let's take a listen to that video from WUR News 9. family for years to come with a new roof from Queen City Roofing. The entire crew takes pride in giving the best. Staff Sergeant Ronald Ouellette, also known as RJ, came from a family of servicemen. His aunt, Sharon Morgan, says patriotism was in his blood. And he had an instinctive desire to want to give and serve. That instinct to serve not only had RJ lending a helping hand to anyone in need, but it also brought him to the U.S. Air Force where the 23-year-old received numerous military awards and decorations as an air transportation specialist. I used to tell him he was ridiculously amazing. RJ died last week in an ATV crash at an air base in Kuwait. Sharon says his family is still trying to come to terms with his sudden death. For his parents and his sister, 
it's been incredibly difficult. As the family tries to grapple with the loss of a life that had so much promise, Sharon is hoping to preserve her nephew's legacy. She is collecting ribbons that she's hoping to hang at RJ's alma mater, Londonderry High School. The ribbons will be placed on the school grounds. An exact location will be decided on Monday. When we're done, um, we'll take gather all the ribbons and make some wreaths, give them to the family, and also put them on RJ's final resting place. Services for RJ have not been announced. If you'd like to donate a ribbon, you can head over to our website, WMUR.com, to find out how. Reporting in London, Derry, I'm Tim Callery, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Ed Brown, tax invader who led 2007 standoff in New Hampshire, requests time served sentence. A man up for resentencing this month over a month-long armed standoff with U.S. Marshals in 2007 to protect a tax invasion conservation says he should be sentenced to the 13 years he has already served. Edward Brown, 78, was sentenced to 37 years in prison after a standoff at his fortunate life home in Plainfield, New Hampshire. His wife, Elaine Brown, received a 35-year sentence, but a judge decided in January she could be released after serving only tw over 12 years. She is seeking a divorce. Ed Brown is scheduled to be resentenced September 29th in federal court. In a sentencing memo filed with the court on Friday, Edward Brown said resentencing him would be unconstitutional, violating the Fifth Amendment due process clause and double jeopardy probation against municipal punishment for an offense. If the court determines that resentencing does not violate his constitutional right, he requests that he be sentenced to time served based on his minimum history of criminal behavior, declining health, age, and risk factors for complications from COVID-19, and the fact that Elaine and two other defendants were sentenced to time served. His 13 years of incarceration, which he has served from age 65 to 78, absolutely reflects the seriousness of the offense, prompt respect for the law, and provides just punishment, his attorney, Benjamin Linker, wrote. Prosecutors have recommended that Edward stay in Prison. In 2019, Brown was diagnosed with a transmitter attack, often called a minor, mini, mini stroke, and has a history of high blood pressure, but he refused treatment for that condition, Faulkner wrote. The Browns held up in their home after they stopped showing up in court for their trial on tax invasion charges, anti-tax concerters, and out-of-state municipal groups rallied to their cause before U.S. Marshals, posing as supporters, gained entry to their home and arrested them. The Marshals discovered weapons, explosive, and body traps. One charge against the Browns carrying the possession of detective devices in connection with a crime 
of violence carried a mandate minimum sentencing of 30 years. It was vacated following a U.S. Supreme Court decision last year that found the crime of violence term vague. Brown has said he has no current need for weapons, his lawyer wrote in the sentencing memo. Two killed in Rochester crash. Two people were killed in a crash in Rochester on Saturday night, police said. The crash happened about 9.15 p.m. on Washington Street near Rochester Crossing. Rochester police said two vehicles were involved. The names of the victims have not been released. Part of the road was shut down for several hours as crews investigated the crash. Senate Majority Leader speaks out uh, on Ginsburg's vacancy. Let's take a listen to that video from ABC News. follow the reaction pouring in now after the passing of Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. We're now hearing from Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell uh, in a statement, and he said the Senate and the nation mourn the sudden passing of Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg and the conclusion of her extraordinary American life. But those uh, uh, members of our audience who are following the politics of this tonight, this last line of his statement uh, is a signal. He writes, Americans re-elected our majority in 2016 and expanded it in 2018 because we pledge to work with President Trump and support his agenda, particularly his outstanding appointments to the federal judiciary. Once again, we will keep our promise. We will keep our promise, the words from Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell tonight, indicating that they will move forward in looking for a replacement. And John Carl reported earlier the President plans to take action according to our sources in the coming days. Hi, everyone. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And thank you for watching this evening edition of the Riley King Newscast right here on the Riley King Network. Have a great rest of your Sunday evening. I'll see you back here tomorrow for another newscast. Good night and goodbye, everyone.